Welcome to Lifestyle with Neeraj. I cannot help but notice the ubiquitous use of CT scans in medicine in India. There is no doubt that when a physician is concerned that the patient has a serious medical condition that can be best identified using a CT scan, the risk-benefit ratio is overwhelmingly in the patient's favor. But are there instances where a plain x-ray could provide enough information to support patient management without the expense or radiation exposure associated with CT scanning? Is the average patient aware of these issues? And has the physician taken the time to discuss these points with the patient? Finally, is there a pecuniary incentive or kickback for the physician to order CT scans over x-rays or ultrasounds? According to one web page, which is referenced at the end, physicians in India collect 10 to 15% from the diagnostic center for referring the patient to them. I was also very impressed to learn from the same reference that CT and MRI scans for the poor are paid for by the Indian government. Let us start by examining the amount of radiation involved in getting various medical imaging tests. The relevant unit of measurement is the C word, which quantifies the damaging effect of radiation upon the body. One sievert carries a 5.5% chance of eventually developing a fatal cancer. The relevant doses in medical imaging are reported in millisieverts, which are one thousandth of one sievert. X-ray equipment is simpler, less expensive to set up and operate, and more portable. X-rays are designed for imaging heart tissues, such as bone, which appear white in the image. Sensitivity declines for soft tissues, which appear as shades of grey. Moreover, X-rays only provide a two-dimensional image. CT scanners also use ionizing radiation, but are large bulky devices that are much more expensive to set up and operate. This is reflected in the cost of obtaining a CT scan, which is 1500 to 2000 rupees in India. The cost of an X-ray is 150 to 200 rupees, or about one tenth. CT images are much better at detecting soft tissue masses and localizing them with three-dimensional imagery. This can be very useful for the patient since small, for example, less than one centimeter masses can be detected. A tumor may be identified before it has a chance to spread. It can also allow diagnosis without exploratory surgery. The disadvantage is that, that the false positive ratio increases as well. Small, clinically inconsequential masses or nodules are frequently identified resulting in anxiety for the testing and expense to the patient. Studies have cited false positive rates as high as 20 to 50 percent. It also means more revenue for the doctors in private pay-as-you-go setups. Thankfully, our Canadian system is funded by the taxpayer and is relatively immune to this type of exploitation. Let us get back to the table showing radiation exposures. Notice that the amount of radiation from a chest CT is 7 millisievert versus 0.1 millisievert in an X-ray. In other words, the, radi the radiation from CT is 70 times higher. The risk increases in conditions requiring repeated CTs. Unfortunately, I see the misuse of CT scanning in India time and time again. In one case, a 12-year-old female was diagnosed with empyema. She was treated appropriately with antibiotics and a chest tube and eventually recovered. CT scans were done initially to assist with the diagnosis. However, what concerned me was that the patient was asked to report back for weekly checks following recovery. A chest CT was performed each time. I believe a simple chest x-ray would have been adequate. We have a case here in which a young girl had repeated ionizing radiation exposure to the chest. She and her parents should be concerned about the additional risk of coronary artery disease, breast cancer, and another malignancy. What can you as the consumer do about this problem? 
having some basic knowledge of these issues is an important first step. You can discuss alternative medical imaging techniques. For example, ultrasound, which does not involve radiation, is often adequate for imaging soft tissues in the abdomen. Its limitations become apparent for what are called retroperitoneal structures such as the ureter or organs obscured by the intestines such as pancreas and adrenal glands. Although more expensive, MRI is excellent in almost all medical settings having supplanted CT in many cases. When the patient has a chronic condition that requires regular assessments, he or she might want to discuss lengthening the interval between CT scans. And it is probably not wise to request CT scans just to get a thorough checkup when it is not medically indicated. One needs to be more careful before exposing children to ionizing radiation compared to mature individuals. Apart from theoretical differences in susceptibility, children are expected to live longer, allowing time for cancers to develop. Even though the risk to the individual is relatively small, you can imagine the added burden of additional cancers triggered by exposure to medical imaging technology when you consider the millions of CT scans performed annually in the country. Since I'm not a healthcare professional, I cannot give specific advice, but I do urge the consumer to make an informed decision and to play an active role in one's medical care. Thanks for watching.